Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries. Turn your King James Bible to Jeremiah 43. This is a continuation of the Jeremiah series. Now, remember something. They had just, uh, all the survivors of the massacre had went to Jeremiah and said, Hey, uh, Jeremiah, would you uh, talk to the Lord and ask him some things for us? Uh, what should we do? Whatever the Lord says to do, we'll do it. You know? So just 10 days later, you know, Jeremiah tells them, uh, you know, don't go to Egypt. Stay in, stay in the land of Judah. Don't be afraid of Nebuchadnezzar. He's my servant. He'll take care of you. And, you know, but uh, this is their reply. You know, Jeremiah tells them, don't go to Egypt. Now, my note here is this. The Lord had taken Israel out of Egypt under Moses. Remember, they wandered in the desert for 40 years. God took Israel out of Egypt. And he wanted to take Egypt out of Israel. As far as I'm, as far as I know, Egypt is never spoken of kindly in Scripture. If anybody knows of a place where Egypt is spoken of kindly in Scripture, please let me know. I don't think it is. I can't find not one place. All right, so let's read Jeremiah 43 in verse 1. And it came to pass that when Jeremiah had made an end of speaking unto all the people, all the words that the Lord their God, for which the Lord their God had sent him to them, even all these words. Now remember, Jeremiah told him, don't go to Egypt. Stay in the land of Judah. We read that in Jeremiah 42. Verse, all right, so let's go to verse 2. Then spake Azariah, the son of Hoshahiah, and Yohanan, the son of Korea, Kar Karia, and all the proud men, and all the proud men, saying unto Jeremiah, Thou speakest falsely. Jeremiah, you're a liar. Thou speakest falsely. The Lord our God hath not sent thee to say, Go not into Egypt to sojourn there. Oh boy, here we go. But Baruch, the son of Neriah, setteth thee on against us, for to deliver us into the hands, into the hands of the Chaldeans, that they might put us to death and carry us away captives into Babylon. So, you know, they, they come to Jeremiah, they ask him, hey, uh, inquire to the Lord for us, and we're going to do what, you, you know, whatever the Lord says. Now remember, all the false prophets before uh, told Jer uh, Jerusalem, oh, don't worry about the, the Chaldeans and the Babylonians. They're not going to take us captive into Babylon. We're not going to die by the sword. We're not going to die of famine. We're not going to die of pestilence. When Jeremiah said the opposite, he said, you will. So Jeremiah has been right 100%, and Jerusalem's false prophets were wrong 100%. So... So, verse 4, So, Yohanan, the son of Korea, and all the captains of the forces of all the people, obeyed not, they obeyed not the voice of the Lord to dwell in the land of Judah. Oh, boy. So, why did you even bother to come to Jeremiah? You know, I'd be like, dudes, you guys do whatever you want to do. I'm out of here. Well, that's what I would have said.
But they obeyed not the voice of the Lord to dwell in the land of Judah. But Yohanan, the son of Kariah, Kari and all the captains of the forces took all the remnant of Judah that were returned, that were returned from all nations whither they had been driven to dwell in the land of Judah. Every man and woman and children and the king's daughters and the king's daughters and every person that Nebu Zaradan, the captain of the guard, had left with Gedaliah, the son of Ahikam, the son of Shephan, and Jeremiah the prophet, and Baruch, the son of Neriah. Now remember that uh, Gedaliah had, he was one of the ones that was killed. So, verse 7. So they came into the land of Egypt, for they obeyed not the voice of the Lord. Thus came they even to Taphanes, uh, Ta Panhes, Ta Panhes, something like that. Then came the word of the Lord unto Jeremiah and Ta Panhes, saying, Take great stones in thine hand, and hide them in the clay, in the brick kiln, which is at the entry of Pharaoh's house in Tapanes, in the sight of the men of Judah. And say unto them, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Behold, I will send and take Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, my servant, Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, my servant, and will set his throne upon these stones that I have hid, and he shall spread his royal pavilion over them. So, Nebuchadnezzar is going to come down to Egypt, and he's going to whip some butt. He's going to take Egypt. And let's face it, Egypt was the breadbasket of the Middle East. It was a very desirable a uh, piece of farmland, at least by the Nile River. You know, to this day, Egyptian cotton and Egyptian wheat are uh, very, very fine quality. I mean, if you can find Egyptian cotton sheets, they're expensive. They're not cheap. So, all right, so Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, my servant, and I will set his throne upon these thr stones. I remember the stones were right there by the Pharaoh's palace. And will set his throne upon these stones that I have hid, and he shall spread his royal pavilion over them. Verse 11, And when he cometh, he shall smite the land of Egypt, and deliver such as are for death to death, and such as are for captivity to captivity, and such as are for the sword to the sword. And I will kindle a fire in the houses of the gods, plural, and I will kindle a fire in the houses of the gods of Egypt, and he shall burn them Oh, so all those fake churches are going to get burned, huh? Oh, yeah. And I will kindle a fire in the houses of the gods of Egypt, and he shall burn them and carry them away captives, and he shall array himself with the land of Egypt as a shepherd putteth on his garment, and he shall go forth from thence in peace. He shall break also the images of Beth Shemesh, that is in the land of Egypt, and the houses of the gods of the Egyptians shall he burn with fire. And guess what? It came to pass. Oh, yeah. The gods of Egypt, which is one of the reasons, well, big reason why the Lord wanted Israel out of Egypt. But they wouldn't listen, you know. 
Has anything changed in thousands of years? No, absolutely not. So, all right, well, this is the end of chapter 43. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb of God, slain from the foundation of the world. In Jesus' precious name, amen.